Yo, what's good, Dish TV? How you guys doing? I'm excited to get you guys another video. It's been a little bit. Um, been super busy with the basketball season, but this content was much needed. You guys need some clearing up of some information for you um, that you probably didn't even know that you needed, but um, this video is about the, the one and only none other than Brownie James. Um, everybody has a lot of opinions about this kid. Um, and some you can you can agree with. I mean, some some is warranted. Um, some of the negative things that are sometimes said, but um, a lot of things, in my, in my opinion, I think are unwarranted. And I don't think people truly see the value of this kid's game, and they think that a lot of things that he does um, as a basketball player is not warrant um, is not doesn't warrant the attention that he gets. Um, and, and part of that is true. His dad is, a, of course, LeBron James, so he's going to get some um, attention that other people won't, but that's not his fault. You don't see a lot of people, like, and even just looking at, if you look back at what his high school tape, the kid did an East Bay end game, um, windmills constantly. Um, so a lot of different things that he did in game. He had 15 points in the McDonald's All McDonald's All-American game, five for eight from three, um, were some of the best competition in the country so um a lot of things that this kid has done i mean even in the conference where uh our conference is the bcl and i i mean i watched all of these guys a lot of them i will tell you no one i have not seen one person do an east bay in game and though that seems like oh that's just a it's a it's a flashy dunk and like that doesn't mean like bro people that's those are things that those are rare traits that most people can't do like so if to think that he's not worth any type of hype is crazy. Um, USC is struggling right now. So a lot of they, their, their record is not really good. Um, they're not playing really well. They're not playing good basketball right now. I um, mean, I think part of that is not having him, um, especially um, right now. He's averaging about 16 minutes per game, seven points. Um, just had his career high yesterday, 15 points. Um, but the guy is a, a, an immediate impact, and it's you'll see it in areas that may not even necessarily show up in the scoreboard. Defensively, it's already evident. He's the best defender on the team, um, on ball at least. Um, yeah, he's averaging 1.4 assists, 2.4 rebounds in 16 minutes, um, 7 points, so not bad. Um, shooting 46% from the field, 33% from three. Not getting a lot of shot attempts. Um, he's getting about five to six maybe a game so you you can understand he's gonna have a low point total but college basketball is about um a lot of guys won't have high point totals Devin Booker was a lottery pick and he averaged nine points per game in college so it's really not so much how um how like your averages and I think that's what people get a little mixed up when you see a college guy and he's not like that stuff doesn't matter because the NBA game is going to be a lot more free flowing. You're going to see just man to man defense, and I think um, Isaiah Collier, who's the number one player in the country, going to be the top pick in the draft right now um, for 2024. Uh, he's he's been struggling a little bit and struggling with decision making. But one thing that it's clear people need to see is that he's. He's going against different style of defenses. Like NBA is just going to be straight man to man. So his decisions, pick and roll, you know, read read the read the coverage if somebody's going to drop or are they hedging. Um, if they hedge, I can go around it, um, and then get to the basket or hit my roller. Or well, coverages just are I feel like are a lot more easier. Whereas in college, you're going to see a lot more zone. Um, so it's not e an easier game, but the coverage is defensively going to be a lot more simpler to read in the NBA. Um, but nevertheless, let's get to – let's look at what Brownie's highlights were yesterday. Um, let's get to them. So this activity level, a um, little AM1, tough. So if you can see the clear um, – the clear explosion – the guy has like he's a he's fast he's a crazy athletic he's six four two ten you can see how like stronger he's gotten and that he's he's grown in height recently um, I love this play because this is against a elite score I'm um, hit him with a couple more dribble moves Jordan Pope um, he went to a prolific prep 
Um, that guy, he can he can fill it up score scoring wise. Um, so here you see, and this is he locks him down. The shot clock was running down. Stays grounded, and then this is light. That's light. The dunking. It's light. Extremely light. This guy. Gosh, I wish he would have punched that. Like, it's a miraculous what he's doing out here. He's really hooping. And he had suffered a cardiac arrest three months ago. This, These are the easy, like, the he just sees the floor so well. The team had, like, 14 turnovers in the first half, and he had none. His productivity, he, and he's playing spot minutes right now. So, yes, he's averaging 16 minutes a game, but he's playing, like, two to three minutes at a time. It's hard to get a rhythm. Um, he's, they're starting to extend it a little bit more. Um so it's, it's, you got to be patient with the kid too. Like it's gonna it's gonna take some time for him to get his rhythm completely back. Uh, this is a tough bucket right here. Step back, bink. Mm. You can see like, and that when look when Bronny James is aggressive, and I think that his great decision making, um, and that's pretty. That's the end of it. His great decision making, um, it can. It, it it can get annoying because people can some people can see the talent this guy clearly possesses, but he just doesn't he just doesn't go for it sometimes. And sometimes everybody's like, "Yo, like, bro, look how easy that was! Like that step back! Like, why aren't you doing that every play? Like, but you need a guy on the team. Like they have they got Boogie Ellis and they got um they got Isaiah Carter, they got Kobe Johnson. You got some guys who are aggressive scores." Everybody on the basketball team cannot be that. That's something that, like, and, and me, I, I know from playing with other scores and stuff like that, and I have I have my own scoring ability, but I know from playing with other talented players, you cannot, you have to find your niche. And for me, mine's a spot-up shooting uh, because we had a guy who would create and, um, and, and, sh and do all the, like, scoring for everybody. And we had two guys that could do that. So I can't add into that. It doesn't mesh well. You have to be a glue guy. Bronny understands that. And he knows that he's just stepping into this role. And he's not going to come in just jacking. And I think that's what people think that, like, bro, he know, he's not Kyrie Irving. He's not going to be the number one pick. He knows that. But that doesn't take away from what his type of impact will be. I believe he's a Drew Holiday. Everybody compares him to Drew Holiday. I think that's perfectly what his impact is. And you can see from Drew Holiday's impact on the Celtics this year, it's a perfect comp. Because what Drew Holiday is doing, he's he, Drew Holiday has averaged 20 points in the NBA. But he's clearly taking a step back because you, he knows he's playing with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And then also Chris Stats Rezingas. All guys who average over 20 points per game. All four of them cannot be jackers <laughs> like it, it it's it's clear as day so i i feel like everybody needs to understand this everybody on the team cannot just jack which is why he understands that he has to be the guy to make the extra click which is the extra pass he has to be the guy to you know and maybe if he has a somewhat he has a lane he can drive hey let me pull it out and make the extra pass to um to kick it to somebody who hasn't been involved somebody has to do those things on the team Somebody has to be the guy to dive on the floor for loose balls and, and muck it up in the inside and try to get rebounds as a guard. Like he is that guy for them. And he's gonna see much more time. Cause as you can and even the announcer said it yesterday, and I watched the whole Oregon State game. He said, This team is better with Bronny James on the court. He has to start to see more time. He does. And it's a fact. It's clear as day. He has to start playing more. If you watch the game, you would see he is one of the best decision makers on the team. He is the best. No, not one of them. He is the best decision maker on the team. I love Isaiah Collier's game, but I also see the fact, I also see Bronny has seen so many different coverages from the elite because he's been playing a national schedule since his freshman year. So he's seen so many different type of coverages. And not to say Isaiah Collier, he hasn't because he's played, he's been one of the top, players in the country since his freshman year and even as a middle schooler he was a top player in the country so he's seen a bunch of stuff but I can see that Bronny processes the game differently Isaiah Collier is a little bit more of a scoring guy he can dish but he can he can I think that's why I think he'll thrive in the NBA because the reads are so much more simpler Bronny Bronny's seeing the zones and he's seeing open spots and and seeing the hearts of the zones like he can he can read that 
So it's a lot more easier for him than I think it is for Isaiah Carter. And just, I think he's only played five games at this point. So for it to be that easy for him right now, imagine what it's going to look like when it's game 20 for him. So people need to watch out. And, he, and NBA scouts, are, they see his value. I promise you they do. They see his value. So you may not see it. And you and you may talk to somebody who doesn't see it, and they may think he's just getting hype because he's LeBron's son. I think that's a half truth. He does get some hype because he's LeBron's son. But he's also really good. He's really good at basketball. And if you can't see that, you may be a little bit of a hater. And you may be jealous that maybe – and if coach, you may be a coach that, hey, your player isn't getting as much clout as him. But I can see it, though. I can. I, it's clear as day. And this kid, he's really good. And um, he's done it on the national stage too. So you can't say that this guy hasn't like he's not good enough. Like he's he made McDonald's All American over some people, but hey, it's circumstantial sometimes. Like it's just what it is. People want to see him in the game, but he's good enough. He's good enough, and um, and I think he's going to be even better in the NBA because you do need. I think the floor is going to be a lot more space for him too. He doesn't have to even like make as many reads as he has to in college. I think and. Uh, people can disagree with me. I, I, I'm not, I'm not opposed to to people challenging the idea of what I think about him as a basketball prospect. But I strongly believe this kid's really good, and I think people should be patient um, and understand the traumatic experience that he had, and understand this kid is like he, he, he's just coming back from that. So you have to give it time and be patient, and don't measure him by a point per game total. That's unfair. That's unfair to do to any college kid. Really watch the games. That's what I stress people to do. Watch the games and tell me what you see. Like, the guys, the basketball is not just about scoring. You can make impacts and impact in other ways, and that looks differently for all, like, all different types of first-round picks. Not all first-round. There are first-round picks who are spot-up shooters. Kevin Herter, first-round pick, he's a spot-up shooter. Like, but he's making almost $20 million a year right now. It's, you got to like, hey, team need, guys can show their value in that, and Kevin Hurd is worth that. So you got to look at it differently. Not everybody's going to be, and, and sometimes the guys who are who are scoring the most are taking over, like Sharif Cooper. He was a second rounder, um, second rounder, and now he's he's in he's in, um, just in the G League cycle, and he, he really can't break through to the NBA, and that can sometimes happen for certain guys. Um, but Bronny's not going to be that. I think because he knows how to find his niche like that. Like he knows how to find his niche on whatever team he can see that. Um, and then he also has his dad on the side, but so what that he, that's not his fault. That's not his fault that, um, his dad is LeBron James, but he's nice. And if you don't think so, tell me, tell me somebody you see doing East Bay and East Bay's in game, in game, and then followed up with a windmill. Bro, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. At the highest levels of basketball, you are not seeing people do that. So don't tell me he's not some sort of a special talent. All right? That's all. I got to get – I had to let you guys, like, I had to, had to get that out because I'm, I'm sick and tired of the narratives. I'm sick and tired of it. I see the comments, and I'm tired of you guys trying to, like, be hypercritical and, and act like this kid isn't good at basketball, bro. He's nice. Like, stop it. Like, please stop it. All right? Like I always say, put God first, stack your bread. Peace.